Are you a dinosaur model enthusiast? Do you want to make better buying decisions to improve your collection? If so, this is the show for you. Welcome to episode five of the Dinosaur Review Show. Today, we're going to be looking at the figures of Edmontosaurus. There are currently three figures on the market. So George, as we always start out, what is the fossil record of this dinosaur? Oh, we know so much about Edmontosaurus. In fact, there were herds upon herds of these dinosaurs during the Cretaceous period. And now we see that if you go on a dinosaur dig anywhere in Montana or Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, you are guaranteed to find a fossil of one of these guys. That's how much fossil evidence we have of them. Now, you've been on dinosaur digs out in that area. Have you actually found fossils from these dinosaurs? Oh, yes. I have found uh, teeth. I have found a shoulder blade of a juvenile at Montosaurus. I've also found uh, toe bones, which are very neat. And even tendons can be found of this dinosaur. It's rare in some parts of the body, but in the tail, they're pretty common. Really? Mm -hmm. Have you found a tendon yourself? Yes, I have found many tendons. <laughs> awesome. What features are we going to look at today to determine whether these are accurate or not? So for Edmontosaurus, I'm going to be looking at their bills. As we know, they are duck-billed dinosaurs, so that is an important feature for them. Next, I will be looking at their feet um, and hooves. And lastly, I'll be looking at their bodies because we have actually changed the way that they walk. So we have three figures to look at today. Since Schleich just introduced their figure, why don't we start with the Schleich figure, George? So this guy looks beautiful. I will say this may look familiar to some of our Jurassic World fans, especially if you play the game. This is the same color scheme that the Jurassic World Evolution and Montosaurus has, complete with the yellowish crest, the blue neck, the tan coloring, and the brown spots and stripes. Now, because it is based on the Jurassic World one, there are some inaccuracies. So right off the bat, I'm looking at the bill. This bill is pretty flat as far as uh, duck bills come. Now, there have been recent discoveries based on the keratin sheath that would cover their bills, and it should go all the way down to their lower jaw. It's kind of a sheath. So already got some points off for that. Now, if we move on to the feet, we also know that they didn't have uh, feet like this as much as they had hooves. So all of this would have been in one foot pad with a hoof and a little pinky. So they, got, they did get the little pinky there, but it is not painted. So this toe is not fully painted. If we move on to the back, they were three-toed, um, kind of like T-Rex, but their toes were not as sharp. Uh, the body shape is a little crouched down as far as the body posture goes. The tail is held up. So this is, oh, this is one of the features that I wanted to look for if the tail is held up instead of straight from the body because they have these ridges that run along the spine, but we don't know if they actually stuck out like this. So I think they took a little liberty with this. I would say this one is not the most accurate, but I will say if you are a Jurassic Park or Jurassic World fan, this would probably be the one to get. Next, let's move on to the Safari LTD figure. This one does have the, uh, the sheath that goes almost all the way over the lower jaw. Notice how it also has a crest, just like the previous one, but this one's red. If you look at the feet, you do have that padded cover, but there is no hoof. So this is just completely covered in skin, but we have found evidence of there being a hoof. They do have the pinky, but again, it is not colored. So um, they're in the right direction, but not quite there here for the foot. If we look at the back feet, they are not sharp, which is good. They should be very blunt. And if we look at the tail next, it isn't held up as high as I would like it. It is more straight. It should be jutting out. I would say on the body, it is scoring a lot higher than the other one did. It also has a thicker neck, which um, as you know, shrink wrapping in dinosaurs does happen, which is when we make them skinnier than they should be. So. I do like a full dinosaur. So this one, this one's pretty decent. I'd say it's halfway there. If we go back to the Schleich one for a second, I noticed that it has these bumps on the body. Mm -hmm. Are those accurate or are those made up? Um, 
I would say these bumps are not accurate. Um, I'm glad you brought that up because we have found mummified Edmontosauruses. Really? Yes. We do get the mummified skin of these guys a lot with our discoveries. So these bumps, um, which we've talked about in previous episodes, these are called osteoderms. There is currently no evidence of them having osteoderms on their skin. As we mentioned in previous videos, they are bone embedded in the skin for protection. What we do find are really small rectangular like scales, which I do see in some areas of the figure, but these are too big, I would say, um, to be the scales that we have found in mummified skin remains of this dinosaur. So now let's move on to the final model, the Collect A. I love how big it is. This is this is a monster. But let's start with the bill. It is hard to tell since it has an open mouth in comparison to the other figures, whether the bill goes all the way over the lower jaw. It does look a tiny bit smaller, but I'm sure if it was in a closed position, we'd be able to tell a lot better. If we move on to the feet, there's the hoof I've been talking about. It's present in this figure, and there's that pinky. It's still not painted, uh, but it is painted on this side. Oh, actually, the inner. There we go. That's the one I was looking for. So these are painted. The pinky one is one that didn't have a claw, now that I remember. I probably should look on the other ones to see if they have the inner ones. I would say this so far is the most accurate as far as the arms go. If you look at the back legs, we have the blunt toe claws, very good, um, and even a more broader foot pad, which is very useful when you're very heavy. One thing that I've noticed about this uh, posture is that it is holding its tail up at the correct angle, as reconstructions have shown, but it does dip down a little bit. This top part here shows a little bit of the, um, the vertebrae sticking out into these spines, which we aren't sure if they did have that sort of protrusion on their back and tails. Now, the other thing I wanted to highlight, which I forgot to at the beginning, is the crest. This one seems to be very textured. You can kind of almost see blood vessels running through it, mm -hmm. um, which probably lead to its red color. What would the crest have been made of? Would that have been a bony structure, or was that more of a fleshy? Uh, both, actually. So, Edmontosauruses have been found with ridges on top of their skulls, these bony ridges that have blood vessels preserved in them, which is probably what they're trying to interpret here. But as most crests that we see in reptiles and even birds is that they have an extra coating on top. Uh, birds like the cassowary, they do have a bony structure in their skeleton for the crest, but most of the crest is actually made out of keratin, which is uh, the same stuff that our fingernails are made out of. What would that have been used for? Since it wasn't very big, it was probably used for identification or as a way for mates to see how healthy they were. So decision time. These actually are all similar in price. So which one would you go with, George? I would pick the Collect A at Montesaurus. I mean, the size of it is amazing. The accuracy is there. And overall, it's a very beautiful figure. I do like all the colors in it. Now, you actually own one of these figures, George. Which one do you own? I own the um, Safari one. So this one, before, used to be the most accurate until we made the discovery about the hooves, which I think has changed now. So this is the one that I have, and I would still pick this one over it. I just, I didn't know there was a better one out there. <laughs> All right. Well, George, we'll talk after the video. <laughs> do you still have unanswered questions on any of these models, or do you disagree with our conclusions? If so, check out below to find out how you can be notified of our live stream question and answer sessions. After certain episodes, we will put George on the hot seat to answer any additional questions or defend himself if you disagree with his conclusions. Thanks for watching. See you in the next episode.